Hi guys, let's look at first topic in Form 2, a series of how we can answer various questions, especially in word processors. So in this tutorial, we shall do word processors, questions and answers. So what are the questions that are expected in Microsoft Word? Number one, uh, the definition of a word processor. So define the following terms word processing and b electronic word processing so when you talk about word processing it is the art of creating saving editing formatting and printing text and graphic uh, graphics or graphic documents using an electronic word processor so that one takes us to the next terminology what is an electronic word uh, processor so an electronic word processor is a computer application program uh, that enables the user to create save retrieve edit and format and also uh, print text and graphics rich documents so guys here uh, your teacher will be introducing you to microsoft word of which it is an example of an application program that enables the user to create save retrieve edit and format document so that is the definition of an electronic word processor so we go to question number two explain three methods that can be used to create a text rich document so these are the answers you can use manual word processing uh, that is you can use uh, a pen and a paper and then write your uh, text also you can use a mechanical word processing uh, a machine or device just like a typewriter then the the heaviest or the richest answer is that um, you can use electronic word processing that is done using word processor program running on a computer so guys that is the expected answers then we can also go to another subtopic purpose of word processing so give for examples of electronic word processors available in the market today remember up there we have defined what is an electronic word processor it is a software or an application program that can be used to create uh, edit format and print a uh, document so guys the first one is the one uh, i am using or also the one that will be taught so we have microsoft word we have rotas word pro we have corel word a perfect and also open office writer the above three softwares are proprietary you have to buy them but the last one open office writer is free of charge it operates at the uh, just uh, at uh, the free license so guys you also have question number four state the purpose of word processing and give six examples of documents that can be created using a word processor so word processing enables creation of documents so the purpose of word processing is to enable the creation of documents and the examples of such documents we have letter memo or memorandum you can also create project reports that you then uh, like you'll be doing in kcc project curriculum vitae or cv business plans users manuals and others so there are many documents that you can create using a word processor then we can proceed to the next subtopic advantages of electronic word processing so guys state five advantages of using an electronic word processor program number one we have it has superior document formatting features when you talk about um uh, formatting this is beautifying your work by use of uh, simple uh, that is simple uh, words uh, just say formatting is beautifying your work that is increasing the size of the text that is font size size changing the color and others also it has better editing features when you talk about editing in simple term editing is making changes so you can make changes like delete you can auto correct you can find a replace you can also apply type of a mode uh, of which we shall look at them when we 
uh, Richard editing a document. Then it produces network. Yeah, that is true. You can uh, look at the answers. I have separated my questions and answers uh, by uh, use of CARA, that is making it neat. It can handle bulk production of document uh, through mail image. Later on, we shall be looking at mail image. This is whereby you can create one letter and then send it to very many recipients. So it can handle bulk production of documents through mail, uh, mail, uh, mail merge or printing. It saves document for future reference. Guys, if you create a science fair project today and save it in a computer, uh, you still be in a position to get it the following years. So that is an advantage of an electronic word processor. Then state three disadvantages of creating a document using freehand or manual typewriter. Number one, eraser and uh, whiteout editing leave the final document untidy or dirty. So you can imagine uh, using uh, manual rubber or whiteout, that document remains untidy. Formatting document is tedious and difficult, that is very true. You can imagine trying to change the font uh, from a typewriter or from written text, that is tedious. Then, limited document preparation tools such as automated spell checker, templates, and such features, hence lower productivity. So, the answer here is lower productivity. The next subtopic is using a word processing package, that is the use of a word processing package. Now, here we are trying to get to the practical details. So, question number seven. State four common features in most electronic word processor. So the uh, obvious answers is that you can create a file, you can save, you can edit and open it later on or retrieve. Having uh, it also the, the next answer is that have editing tools such as Perry Checker, the Saulas and autocorrect features. So guys, uh, when you mess up in a Microsoft Word, you can always uh, go to references or hit some combination of keys or icons or ribbons and then go to spare checker. The computer will autocorrect for you. Then we have synonyms. If you need to get a synonyms, then we have the Saurus that does that. Then we have provide predefined features for generation of headers and footers, indexes, uh, footnotes and reference. Also, you can add automatic page numbering. Also, we have can be used to import tables, text, graphical objects from other programs. Guys, uh, you can get a copy of these um, questions by contacting my WhatsApp number. It is at the end of the uh, document. So, number eight, highlight the labeled features of a graphical user interface, the GUI. What, uh, so, down here, we have figure 1.1, .1, where we have the the microsoft word screen so the first part part a there is called the title bar part b is the ribbon uh, then part e is the control box part d are the vertical and horizontal scroll bar part g is the status bar and part f is the working area so guys these are the answers down here so you have the title bar the ribbon we have the toolbar, sorus, control box, working area, and the status bar. Everything is explained. So the title bar gives the title of the current saved document or the running program. The ribbon uh, provides you with commands. Toolbars uh, provide you with shortcuts. Rulers are used for uh, setting tabs or indents. Control box is used to perform a specific task like minimize, maximize, and close. Then we have working area. This is where you type your text. And the status bar will show you uh, a number of things, like how many words, that is the word count, uh, how many pages, your page, what of what, and also whether you're using a UK or uh, English, you, uh, that is a US dictionary or any other, depending with your country. Highlight two ways of starting Microsoft Word application. So guys, you can go to Start menu, select Microsoft Office, and then Microsoft Word. Or 
The next thing is to double click any available Microsoft document on your desktop. Then we have question number 10. With reference to a typical word processing application such as Microsoft Word, state three different approaches of creating a new document. So guys, you can create from an existing uh, document, like for example, uh, this document of mine and I can press file then new and for that case I have created a new document alternatively I can press keyboard keys control plus n n for nonsense then you'll be in a position to create a new document so the next answer is that you can create a document from a template a template is a preformatted uh, example then you can also create it from a blank window. That is by starting uh, Microsoft, uh, that is Microsoft Office. Then you go to Microsoft uh, Word. Number 11, outline the steps one would follow to create a new document and save it into a removable storage media. So you launch a word process application, then you enter the text and necessary graphics then you just go to file menu or office button that is for office 2007 then uh, select save as command other guys will press f12 or control and s then you type the file name and save then we have question number 12 state three advantages of using templates to create a new document we have said a template is like a, it's a pre-created document that gives you features that you want or tries to give you an example of what you want. So templates have pre-formatted features which quicken the creation of standard document. Templates improve user productivity due to shortened document creation learning curve. Templates adopt widely accepted document formats and professional standards. That's very true. Like for example, if you want to create a CV, you can import a template that is worldwide accepted. So you just need to edit, write your name and other stuff. 13, outline the procedure for creating a document based on an existing template. So what you need, you need to do is to open file menu or office button, click new. In the new dialog box, select a template such as professional assume and then replace the generic text with your own text. Then question number 14. Carol, a Form 2 student, does not know how to open an existing document. Outline how he would open the document. So guys, you can use keyboard shortcut, like you can press Ctrl plus O then search the document's location. Other guys will just click on the open icon on the standard toolbar. Others will go to fire or office button, then click on open. Question number 15. Explain, explain how one can cross a current document without exiting from the application program. So this is very simple. You can just go to file uh, or in Microsoft Office 2007, you just click the Office button, then cross. What I mean, you just go to file, then we have cross here, cross. So that one will cross the learning file, but we do not exit the whole application. Then, List the circumstances under which a user may use save as command instead of save command. So guys, there is a, different between, uh, a difference between save and save as command. So save as command is used in three circumstances in most cases. Saving the document for the first time, when changing the document's location, and when you are saving the document in a different location. Like for example, if I want to change this file of mine from the hard disk or from my laptop to a flash disk, then I will hit file, then save us. Then that one will be in a position to give me the location. 
Then the next point, the next point, uh, some guys may use savers command to change the format. Like for example, I want to change my document from uh, Microsoft Word to PDF. So I will be in a position to uh, do that. Like for example, I can just go to fire, then I go to savers. Then down here, guys, here, I change PDF. You see now, I have changed the format of my uh, document. Then explain how one would protect a word processor document file from unauthorized access or modification. So the answer is simple. You just put a password. So save the document and specify a password to open and another password to modify. So guys, what you need to do is just go to file, then you go to save us, then you go to tools, then you go to general. Here, guys, you see, it will ask you for the password to open and the password to modify. Then you just type the same password. Specify the shortcut keys of the following. So save, we use control plus S. Cross, we use control plus F4. That, that is the functional key. Then we have open, we use control plus O. Save us, we use F12 or just the fire and then okay we are asking we're asking about the keyboard shortcuts so the answer is f12 let's go to the next subtopic of importance we have editing a document so what uh, what do the term this uh, this one should be what do what do the terms editing a document refer to as i said daria editing a document is the process of making changes to an existing document like document like doing something like deleting or correcting mistakes or replacing some text state five editing features that are available in most standard word processors so number one is sparing and grammar checker number two is autocorrect we have undo and redo we have find and replace and also we have the saurus so i had explained earlier what is the saurus it is a feature that gives you uh, synonyms and anatonyms that is words with similar meaning and their opposite then we have question number 21 these three keyboard keys that can be used to delete text in a word so we have insert key in type of a mode we also have backspace and delete then I'll try the procedure for deleting the entire text on a page. So simply highlight by clicking, uh, that is by pressing Ctrl plus A in your computer. That one highlights the whole document, like Ctrl A, you see what happens. Then from there, you just hit delete on your keyboard. Then differentiate between insert mode and type over mode. Insert mode is the normal typing mode. Like for example, guys, if I want to add the word here, me, you see, the cursor will automatically allow me to write it me. So that one is the normal mode. It is called insert mode. But when I press the insert key on the keyboard, then it switches me to a type over mode, whereby when you type words, they are replaced as you type. That is the type over mode mode it's used to replace text or delete existing existing one then we have amina a secretary in a school highlighted a block of text and accidentally hit the delete key on the keyboard how can the text uh, be restored so this is very simple amina can press ctrl plus z on the keyboard alternatively she can just hit the undo button on the standard turbo 25. Maggie, an, an, an author of computer studies books, wanted to see words that had the same meaning as the word official. Highlight how, uh, highlight how she, highlight how she would achieve this. So, uh, Amina wants to um, see words with the same meaning. So, you just highlight then you go to synonyms or yeah actually you go to synonyms then uh, the, the saurus feature will have been a position to do that like for example i want to see the word highlight i just right click then i go to synonyms you see the meaning the word highlight has the 
those meaning there also like something like computer you can just go to synonyms you see these are the synonyms of uh, computer then question number 26 differentiate between delete and backspace so guys delete key erases characters to the right of the cursor where backspace erases characters to the left of the cursor that one is very crucial make sure you understand that then differentiate between the delete copying and that is delete copying and moving text so here uh, we need to have the difference between copying and moving copying is making a duplicate where moving is transferring the work so when you cut you are really transferring the work to a different location but copying you are actually making a duplication write the keyboard shortcut keys that uh, that would be used to perform the following operations copy it is control c move control x paste control v find control h or control f so guys you can practice on that question number 29 don wanted to change all the occurrences of the word manual in a document with the word book i'll try in the step so the steps are very simple you just press on your keyboard control and h don't use control and f it will misbehave in the later versions of office so press control h then you will get a dialog box like for example control h so you will get this dialog box the dialog box will ask you find what you type manual then replace with it will uh, you replace it we uh, uh, replace it with a book then press the press or this button here this button here will be this one it will be replace or this one replaces all occurrences but replace replaces only the first occurrence of whatever you have searched explain the importance of proofreading document before printing so proofreading helps to identify and correct typographical or grammatical errors typographical are errors that result when you are typing grammatical errors are these are the grammar errors like um, subject verb agreement then we have these two examples of proofreading so uh, tools you can use sparing and grammar checker you can also use autocorrect then we have formatting a document we are done with uh, 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 that is editing a document as i said earlier formatting a document is the process of enhancing uh, to improve the layout style features and appearance of the document so as to make it look professional neat and presentable so guys in simple words formatting is beautifying your work list the five text formatting attributes available in standard word pro uh, processor package so guys we have font size font style we have font calligraphy uh, like for example what I, what I mean by font calligraphy, assume I have highlighted this one, then I go to uh, home, then here as I change, you see guys, the text is changing as I move the cursor. So this is how the text calligraphy is described. Then from there, we proceed, we, we proceed to this one. So we also had line spacing and font color as answers. Write the keyboard shortcuts that can be used to perform the following operations we have bold bold you can press ctrl b underline ctrl u italicizing ctrl i when you go to the home key here we have them this is the bold this is italics and this is underline so you just need to highlight then hit the buttons there or the keyboard shortcuts then define the following terms we have drop cup and font how do you understand by a drop cap? A drop cap is an enlarged letter at the beginning of a sentence. Like for example, I need to have this E made drop cap. So I go to insert, then uh, drop cap, then you see that is the drop cap. Number three becomes the, the drop cap. We also have the, the other drop cap. So you just need to highlight, then go to drop cap. Then 
explain how sorry study each of the following sentences and state the text case when we talk about text case it is either capital letters or small letters or mixed so we are the word that is called sentence case a normal sentence is called sentence case but a sentence with small letters is called lower case a sentence with capital letter is called upper case but we also have title case this is where you capitalize uh, every first letter of every word we are the word you see uh, the letters the first letter of every word has been capitalized then we have explain how you would change the sentence we are the world to become we are the world with a small a here and this one is uh, small letters capital capital small letters so here you apply a case called togo case so when you go home then hit this in a position to see to see the cases we have sentence case lower case upper case uh, capitalize each word and togo case so those are the uh, stuff then describe each of the following features we have x raised to power 10 and y lowered to 2 so 10 is called a superscript this is called a super a superscript then 2 here is called a subscript differentiate between ident and a tab stop an ident is the spacing created by text and uh, sorry away from the margin where a tab stop is a specific interval that the cursor jumps when the tab key is pressed making the next point for inserting text then question number 39 a French teacher directed all students in her class to be presenting their French composition in double uh, spacing. Total of points times New Roman format. I'll train the procedure of double spacing uh, uh, document. So the first thing you just highlight, then go home. Then the, here we are in the paragraph. So you just click this two double it will double space you are you are stuff so that's how you go about it then a study okay study the document uh below this is the document below identify the text arrangement like now guys if you look at this one this one is justified this one is centered this one is right aligned so the examiner here just want to see whether you understand Microsoft Word alignment. So if I go down here, you see that paragraph one is justified, paragraph two is centered, and paragraph three is light aligned. Differentiate between margins and gutter. Margins mark the region which within which text and graphics have to be pressed on a page, while gutter is the extra space left around the margin to allow for binding so gutter we are talking about this one this side i uh, i punch to i punch to make sure that uh, uh, i punch to make sure that uh, I, I i i can get somewhere to uh, fire that is to put the the punch and fire then and a form to student formatted a document to three columns explain how to achieve this so guys this one the first step is to highlight then you just go to page layout then you go to columns then you choose three as simple as that so that's how that one is accomplished so the first step is to highlight then uh, on the layout menu you click on columns then you select three columns just like I have done then we have two types of page orientation we have uh, Radiscape, we have portrait. So the question is, you differentiate these two. So we have Radiscape orientation, this one, and the, that is and the portrait orientation. Those are the two. Then we have outline the importance of each of the following document formatting features. We have page numbers, headers and footers, uh, text styles. Uh, we have footnotes and head notes. We also have table of content. So page number help a reader 
to easily navigate through the document. Footnotes and headnotes are used to cross-referencing or offering extra information that could be included in the text. Headers and footers provide a quick way for a person to navigate through the document looking for a particular topic without having to fully open the document. Then we have a table of content enables one to locate at glance topics and subtopics in the document. That is very true. Textiles provide an easy way to format blocks of text quickly. So those are the answers that are expected there. Then we have Joyce, a Form 4 student, has completed writing the computer studies project report, but is unable to automatically generate a table of content. Explain how, uh, uh, explain, um, explain to her, explain to her how to do it. So guys, this is simple. Open the, uh, the, the reference tab. This is for Office 2003, but now we are using higher versions. So this is the procedure for the higher versions. On the reference tab, click on table of contents. Then you choose the required stuff. Like now, what I mean, you go to references, then you go to table of content here. Then you'll be in a position to choose. We have several options down here. Like for example, if I want this one, I just click on it, then it will just bring the table of content automatically. Question number 46. Explain the following features common in spare checkers. We have text appears in different colors. So spare checker normally show misspelled words or gram grammar mistakes in different color. They usually use red and green. Then we have word suggestions. The spell checker provides a list of correct word or grammar that an editor can choose. Then we have number 47. Differentiate between autocorrect feature and the saulas. So the autocorrect feature automatically corrects misspelled words as the user types them by pressing them with the ones uh, in the autocorrect database. Whereas the saurus is a repository of words that are synonyms and an autonym to the ones used in the document. That is very true. Then we can proceed to the next subtopic, creating and manipulating tables. When creating a table in a word processor, one, one can either insert or use the draw table Tool. Explain two approaches. So, inserting a table involves using the insert table command, table to select the number of columns and uh, rows, and the specific table is inserted in the document. On the other hand, draw a table in okay, uh, draw a table involves you using the table draw tool to create a table row and column. So, guys, what we mean here. Uh, if I can go to the new page, you can just go to insert, then table, we have the option of insert, where you can put 8 columns and 20 rows, then click on OK. You see this one has created a table for you. Alternatively, another guy will just come table, draw, then draw the table. That is, let me repeat, so there is a guy who will come, draw the table, like this, draw the table, you see, draw the table. That, that way. So those are the two available methods. You can also insert from Excel. Just from insert table there, then you can insert from spreadsheet. So those are the methods. Then question number 49. Highlight how one would perform the following operations. Insert a row or a column in a table. Simply you right click on the side of the cell, then on, on the shortcut menu you point to insert, then row below or row above. In case it's a quorum, quorum right, quorum left. So those are the steps for both row and quorum. Then navigate through a table. You can use the arrow keys on your keyboard or the mouse cursor by clicking. Question number 50. Explain the following table operations. 
merging cells, splitting cells, sorting. So merging means joining together. So merging is combining or grouping several cells into one. Splitting is dividing a cell into several cells. Sorting is arranging. The content is in either ascending or descending order. So those are the answers to those questions. Explain how one would achieve the following. Create a table from an existing text. That one you use a feature called uh, uh, convert text to table or table to text. So you can organize the text into where aligned rows using the tabs. Then select the convert text to table command. Then back convert table to text. You use the same method. That is you use the uh, convert text to table command. Then we have most standard uh, word processors can be used to perform mathematical operations. Like a formula to calculate the following in a table. So we have some row 2, column 5 to row 7 to 5. So that's how you go about it. You write equals to sum e2, full colon e7 and hit enter. So we also have average. So for the average you do the same only that you alternate or you change the word sum to average. Highlight two ways of formatting table borders on uh, table borders and shading. So to format borders and shading on the table menu, right, uh, click on table auto format. In the format list box, select the format you want. The format applies to borders, shading, font, and color. Then to format shading and shading and borders, use the tables toolbar. Then we have uh, distinguish, distinguish, okay. Uh, state the importance of text shading. Text shading gives a background color to the text and if used properly, raise emphasis on the text. What we mean here is like now I can highlight this. So I can just go to home, then use the highlighter. You see now, you are like trying to put emphasis. Then distinguish between inserting tables and importing tables. To insert a table uses a wizard to quickly create and insert tables in documents. Where importing tables entails getting a table from an external application. Then we have mail merge. What is mail merge? And what is uh, form rate and what is merge fields? So mail merge is the process of generating a single document from two documents. Form rate is the main document on which merge fields are inserted. Then we have merge. Merge fields are placed holders that are placed by they are placed sorry they are placeholders that are replaced by actual content of the address book when two documents are merged. So in an exam, you get the examiner putting for you such such. Those are the placeholders we are talking about. State two types of files that are used to generate mail image. So we have the primary and secondary, uh, or rather, we have the letter and the data source. Highlight three main tasks of creating mail image. So number one, to create the main document, such as form letter, create a new data source, then merge the three. So the three main steps. Uh, Foreign in mail match is creating of letters, merging the letter and the data source, and also creating the data source or the addresses. Don't ignore that. Question number 59. List three examples of documents that can be used as form letters. So, letters of invitation, such as for parent teacher meeting or shareholders for an annual general meeting, wedding cards, and en envelopes. Then we have question 60. Caroline, a secretary in Tahiti school, is required to send 400 letters to parents inviting them for a parents' day. She takes a whole day to print the letters by deleting the address of one parent 
and typing another explain how you can help Caroline perform this duty uh, using shortest time possible so here we are talking about mirror match so the steps are uh, using mirror match Caroline can merge the letter with the existing addresses uh, from address book in Microsoft 2003 and also the others so on the tools menu point to letters but now emphasize on using Microsoft Office 2007 and above there you just go to mailings so you just go here you see we have mailings then you just go to start the mailing match then you go to wherever you want then state 3 merge options supported by word processor so you can match a new document uh, to a printer or to an email how would you update the names of recipients in a mail match document so change the names of the data source then open the merged document the document would automatically update the details since it is linked to the data source then we have inserting graphics and special symbols so differentiate between a creep art and a drawing a creep art is a graphical object drawn and made available to the user it can be inserted in the document as a complete object. A drawing, on the other hand, is created by the user using the drawing tools available in the word processor. Then we have 34 types of graphics object in word processor. So we have creep art, we have auto shapes, drawings, images, and pictures. So these are the types of uh, graphics that you can answer in an exam. Then uh, differentiate between importing an image and drawing one. So importing entails inserting an image from uh, another source or from an image file. Whereas drawing requires the user to construct the, uh, the image entirely. So importing, you just use the facilities available for importing. Identify ways of updating an image shape and color. So resize the image by dragging its placeholders cut off undesirable edges by cropping change the color of the image by filling so those are the ways of updating an image you can cut unwanted part you can resize it or you can change color define a chart a chart is a graphical object that offers visual representation of two or more varying data so you, you have all seen a chart a chart or a graph is used to uh, it is used to compare results of various uh, different seasons or classes or students i'll try how you would resize a graphical object so simply you click on it then on the edges you see the placeholders you hold the press holder you pull or uh, you pull it in when you pull it inside the document then the document will reduce in size when you pull it out the document is enlarged that is the trick uh, that is the trick behind that then we have printing uh, documents printing documents so guys printing documents state to advantage yes, of reviewing a document before printing so number one is to avoid uh, typographical errors so it helps the user to correct format and layout mistakes saves on ink and paper since it avoids printing mistakes distinguish between a document setup and a print setup a document setup uh, specifies the layout of text and graphical or graphics in the software page where print setup specifies how the printer will lay out and graph uh, uh, that is lay out text and graphics on the uh, hard copy then we have question number seven to study and explain the purpose of the following part so we have this this is the print dialog box we have properties we have the choose printer we have uh, or we have copies and also we have paper per size so these are the answers this is the print dialog box 
So the page range specifies the range of pages to be printed. If you have 70 pages and you want to print 50 to 60, you just type 50 dash 60. The computer will only uh, print the range specified. Then we have name box. It specifies the name of the printer. Up there we have the name box. Then we have the properties. It enables the user to access advanced printing uh, features such as choosing the paper size, paper quality, and print page. Then we have the number of copies. This is where you put the number of copies. If I want to print 10 copies, then that means uh, you type 10. If you, I want two copies, then it means I type 2. Then we have, uh, the uh, that is the page per sheet. That means how many pages do you want? Okay, like I have one document, I want four pages. So I can just tell the machine I need to, two, two. So that one is set here. Here, that is the scale, no scaling here. It is set in, uh, from this uh, point. So guys, thank you very much for watching and also Remember to subscribe, remember to share my videos or my files with other students. You can also ask me questions via WhatsApp. The WhatsApp number is indicated here. Thank you very much.